Hello guys, um, today I'm going to be doing a bit of a more detailed overview of my hobby room. So I know recently I did make a video going over everything. I did clean up a little bit since then, got things a little more well arranged. Most of it's still the same, but I want to give you guys a more detailed overview of just how I got everything set up. You know, a majority of the more interesting robots. And uh, anyways, let's get started. Uh, this is probably going to end up being a long video. I actually tried to record this before and it ended up going about 45 minutes. Um, but I decided to go ahead and re-record it just to try and shorten it up just a little bit. So to start, this is my uh, my solution to the uh, remote problem. So owning a bunch of robots and a bunch of RC cars does come with a bit of a disadvantage. The accessories. Obviously you need them, but there is no real proper way to display them. At least not for a majority of the robots, and obviously the RC cars. Uh, there are some robots, such as like RoboSapien V2, where you can actually uh, hoist the robot, uh, the remote for the robot on the robot itself, and stuff of that sort. Or there's some robots that just don't have accessories to begin with. But by and large, you're going to have to find out some way to keep everything as sorted as possible. Uh, it's not pretty, but I can shut it down. And I could also put stuff on top of it if I want to, especially like whenever I'm rearranging stuff. It gives a nice little area just to move stuff off to the side while I'm rearranging or working. So next, this is my toolbox. I have some, not all, but most of the drawers are listed uh, because they're specifically sorted. And then other ones are a bit more uh, just kind of haphazardly thrown together. The top drawer is where is, it is a bit of a mess in here right now. But this is where I keep my paperwork, and then I also keep a couple just charger cords and stuff like that. I also like to keep sticky notes on the inside right here. This one fell off, but this is where I keep like 3D printer spa, um, notes stuck down. Um, but this works out pretty well for what I use it for. Um, there's a few things I really need to pull out of here just to open up a bit more space. Uh, as you can see, I do try to meticulously keep all of my paperwork for my robots when I get them, just because it does add a little bit of extra value to the robots. Um, and beyond that, having it just for future reference to help with whenever I'm making videos is also a plus. Below that, this is sort of the uh, catch-all drawer, just handy tools, just different things you might need on a daily basis, zip ties, flashlight, super glue, knives, X-Acto knife, you know, just this, that, and the other. Below that is where I keep all my electrical stuff. I've got my backup soldering iron, which I actually need to get a new tip for this one. I really do prefer this one over my main soldering iron right now uh, because it has these built-in LEDs. So I really need to find some new tips for this uh, going forward. Beyond that, we just got some thermal uh, paste, which this stuff's more computer-based or video game console repair based, some Arctic Silver as well, which is like really high quality thermal paste, solder, just, you know, electrical stuff, jumpers. And obviously I don't have everything perfectly sorted, but I try to keep everything as nice as possible. Uh, below that is where I keep my batteries. I really want to go through and actually insulate the inside of this just to keep from any shorts happening. I'd hate to cause a big battery fire uh, so sorry about that. I know it's not the best solution. I just don't really have anywhere else to put them right now uh, Going down. This is where I keep totes like for parts repairs. Let me zoom out a little bit uh, I've got some RC car parts up here uh, 3d printer parts over here uh, There's an Arduino kit right here, which I'm wanting to get more into. I just haven't really had the time uh, ice ivy parts and then back here, I also use some of these totes for some tools just because I don't have a specified drawer for them. So I've got like uh, pliers and cutters and also drill bits back there as well. This is my screwdriver drawer now. Got a bunch of screwdrivers and like attachments for uh, say like drills. Uh, really handy to have it all in one place. This used to be really scattered about and it would make repairs really hard. Uh, so I'm really glad I got that done. Down here is where I have my sockets and wrenches. Um, just like the previous drawer, it used to have everything scattered about, so having it all in one place really, really helps. 
down here is probably the messiest of all these uh, toolbox drawers. It's just kind of where I throw whatever. doesn't really have another place for it to go. Uh, I got a hammer. got some air tools. Got a funnel, paint thinner. You know, just a ma mashup of random extra stuff. I really need to clean that space out so I can move my uh, 3D printer filament into that drawer. So back here, this is the repair corner. And I also keep some of my 3D, most of my 3D printers back here. The only one that's an exception is my uh, QQS, which is right here. Uh, they had to be moved down there just so I could open up this drawer for repairs because I've had a lot of repairs going through uh, here lately. So I've got an RS Media. Unfortunately, it just has too many issues. So I'm going to be uh, sending this off to uh, Zura 635 so that he can use it for other repairs. It has a fried media board. The head is damaged. It's just in rough condition overall. It won't even boot with batteries, and it'll only boot whenever it is plugged into an outlet. Over here, I have a uh, pretty much red RoboSapien V2. It's in the middle of getting parts swapped over. This was originally my, uh, my really badly damaged white, uh, at least externally damaged. So... Uh, Luckily enough, the red, which I recently found at a flea market, uh, even though it was damaged really bad on the inside, the shells are pristine. I have them all put up in that drawer right there. So I'm, I'm switching over all the shells, and I'm also testing out, let me get close here, some 3D printed gears on both sides. And they look really good. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Still got to test them though. If that works out, I'm going to be trying to make those in some larger batches that I can send out to uh, just different people who may need them. Uh, I might end up uploading the files online if they work out well enough. I, I haven't really decided yet as far as that goes. So back here, this is sort of just a tool drawer. Uh, it actually used to be a makeup drawer, uh, but it was being thrown out. And for all the tools that I use as far as the smaller electronic stuff goes. It's a perfect fit for that. And I'm, I think it looks really nice as well, the way I've got it assorted. On this side, I have some uh, larger totes that I can put stuff in. Uh, I was originally using these for 3D printer specific stuff. That's why they're labeled. I need to pull those labels off or change them out. Uh, but it's working out pretty great over here just to hold parts. So like I said, this drawer right here is full of RoboSapien V2 parts. Um, right now the other drawers are actually empty, so, you know, you'll see more stuff kind of build up into that as I get more repairs. On the top of that is where I keep just some little 3D prints that I've done over time. So here's actually one of those gears, just so I can give you guys a close-up look. I think they worked out pretty good. Um, this is also a project I've been working on, which is a replacement IBO ERS-111 ear. So, watch out for that, guys. I might try to get some of those sent out to some of my friends. Um, I also keep just paperwork pinned up on the wall, notes from my friends, notes from other people in the community, uh, some drawings of designs that I've worked on for like battle bots and such. Uh, so let's move on. So this is my computer drawer or desk, I should say. Sorry. This is where I do all of my CAD work, uh, school work, which I'm starting school in January for design and drafting. So I'm really excited about that. This is also where I keep my IBOs. Originally, they were down in this back corner here. Uh, I moved them up here just to put them on better display. Also, I just I like having them sitting next to me while I'm doing my work. Uh, also, I didn't like them sitting down there just because it's a dark corner, kind of hidden off. I'd rather them be out in the open. Uh, this is my robot phone. It's not hooked up to anything currently. I'd like to find an adapter where I can actually hook it up and use it, you know, just for fun. It wouldn't be anything I'd use seriously, but it'd be nice to actually get to play around with it. Uh, so here's my uh, main prototyping 3D printer. This is what I you do most of my 3D printing on that isn't uh, resin-based, which is what I use my uh, Photon Monos for, which are these two printers down here. Uh, but as far as that goes, everything goes through this printer before it goes to any other printers. Because this printer has been my most reliable printer by far. And I'm really able to uh, get parts dialed in and to a point where I feel happy with it before sending it over for more, I guess you could say, high quality or uh, finer detail prints. Uh, beyond that, let's get started on the thing that you guys actually showed up for. 
the robot shelf. This is probably my largest shelf as far as robotics goes. It does have a lot of mismatched, just thrown together, trying to squeeze everything in. Uh, it's not really very well assorted. I wish I could go through and sort everything a bit better. But just for how much stuff I own and how little space I'm working with currently, it's just not possible. Uh, anyways, let's get started on listing off some of these robots. So, up here in the front, we got Isobot. He was a very recent purchase. Really happy that I picked this guy up. I got him from Facebook, and it was a bit of a, a bit of a pain to actually receive him because originally the guy was going to ship him, had issues with shipping, so I had to cancel it. Um, ended up going and picking him up, and we met halfway. I got a pretty good deal on it, so I'm not too, not complaining. I mean, seriously, not complaining compared to what I've seen on eBay. And even on Facebook, Facebook prices have been going up a lot lately. Uh, so I think overall I got a pretty good deal. This is Q. Um, there's no particular reason why he's out on this front display here. I guess it's just because he's in the box. Uh, not brand new in the box. I have got him out and used him. I uh, found this at Goodwill. Really fun little robot. Uh, haven't done much with it. Let's open this up real quick if I can. I don't want to mess it up or anything like that. Here we go. Really clean looking. Uh, I really do like the design of this. Uh, I wish that there was an actual functional camera in here. I think it would be cool to be able to use them so it's, uh, sort of like a Rovio or uh, just any kind of Wi-Fi enabled robot. Nevertheless, really fun to play with, uh, especially for younger kids. I think if I was to do a uh, display or some kind of demo in the future, I would definitely bring this one for uh, younger kids to play with. Uh, behind Q, we've got the Radio Shack Armatron, obviously a classic, definitely a necessity for any robot collection. I'm so glad I found this. I found this at a local antique store, actually, and it did actually come with the box as well, which is something I was really happy about. So here's the box right here. Didn't come with any of the accessories, unfortunately, but for the price that I got it for, I'm not going to complain because I've wanted one of these for a long time. I actually saw them on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think it was the 8-Bit guy was working on one. And that's when I actually found out about these. And ever since then, I've wanted one so bad. So getting back to the shelf back here. Behind these robots, we've got a uh, Tyco Shell Shocker in the very back here. And a Tyco Insect up here. Uh, the Tyco Insect, I actually uh, traded a, uh, what was it, a road sign for. There was someone who just happened to find it. They had it setting outside, actually, of all places. Um, so I offered them the road sign for it because I told them I collect robots and they love road signs. So it ended up working out and I really love this robot. I love the aesthetic. Um, I believe it does work. I haven't used it in a while. The remote is the biggest issue the remote doesn't work but as far as the robot itself goes i do believe that it is fully functional now behind that we were talking about the shell shocker uh i picked this one up quite some time ago you can see i actually have some spare claws laying about because it actually took i had to buy two of these before i could get one that worked uh the first one came in damaged but it was so cheap there was no point in really returning it so i bought the second one and used the first one for parts which i have had to use in the time i've owned this one these claws are uh very likely to be damaged, unfortunately. In fact, it would probably be a really good idea to 3D print some of these, now that I think about it. Uh, but that's a project for future. Um, beyond that, we have this sharper image, a robotic claw tank thing. I'm not sure if it has a specific name. Uh, I got this as a Christmas present. Really fun little toy. Obviously nothing special about it, no kind of autonomy or anything like that. But much in the same way that the uh, the Armatron is, you know, it's just fun to drive around and pick things up and move them around. Um, it does also have an LED in the uh, the base right here, right where the claw is. So that's a neat little feature too, I suppose. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next shelf. So down here, we've got a bunch of smaller robots. Uh, namely, we've got a bunch of Hexbug robots back here all on this Hexbug ant display. Uh, not ant display, sorry, the Hexbug uh, nanos. 
And I even have some of the, the battle armor editions right here. Um, th there's a, quite a few of them that I've just picked up from here and there, thrift stores, where they're like 50 cents each. You know, there's when you find something for that cheap, there's no point in not grabbing it. You know what I mean? Uh, beyond that, we've got these eye dogs. This right here is pretty cool. Let me pull this out. I found this at a Goodwill somewhat locally to me. It's about an hour drive away. And this is a Radio Shack robot. I'm not sure if it has a specific name, but it is a bug of some sort. Uh, I've had this for years. Um, never made a video on it. Really haven't done all that much research on it. I can't even remember what I paid for it, in all honesty. Um, so up here we've got Dustbot. This is honestly one of the... Uh, one of the rarer robots in my collection, actually, which really surprised me. I was looking it up online, and there's not very many of them available. Um, so I'm really glad that I have this guy. Uh, unfortunately, he does have some damage. You can see here his uh, arms are broken. Uh, again, something that really would benefit from 3D printing, I think. So that might be a future project as well. If some 3D printing repair projects would be some videos you guys would enjoy to see, please let me know because I love 3D printing and if there's enough people who would actually watch the videos, I could do a lot of 3D printing. So just let me know about that guys. Back here we have some poochies. I have uh, two poochies and a miauchi. Uh, of the poochie family, I think my favorite is definitely the miauchi. Um, maybe that's just because I'm biased because I have cats, but... It just seems like it has a bit more personality than the Poochies, but maybe that's just me. Um, this is my Mechatar. I've had this for a very, very long time. In fact, when I bought this, the uh, the Mechatar's website where you could actually play the virtual reality game. I guess not virtual reality. The uh, augmented reality, I guess. I don't know what... I'm not sure exactly what the term would be for it since it's connecting the robot into the virtual world versus putting something virtual into the real world. I'm not sure about the nuances there. But I did actually used to play the game pretty religiously as a child. Uh, I really wish that there was some way that that video game could still be active. I would so get all of my robot friends hooked on it, I think. Moving on, this is my uh, NXT. This one has a pretty interesting story. My sister gave this to me for Christmas. And the way that she acquired it was it was already built, already functioning. Apparently, at her local school, it had been left and it was about to be trashed. And she witnessed it being thrown into the trash and, and told the, uh, the teacher to stop throwing it away and asked if she could have it because she knew that I would want it. Beyond that, it's really fun. I've played around with it quite a bit. Not made any videos on it. Um, I'd like to get the humanoid version of the NXT, or I guess the Mindstorms, or, you know, whatever term you like to call it. Uh, I'd really like to add one of those to my collection, though. So, if anybody sees any of those for a good price, let me know. This is SpyBots, Cybernetic Security Robots. I really don't know very much about these. Just found this one new in the box a couple months ago at a flea market. It was pretty cheap. Just, I thought it was worth grabbing just because I've never seen anything quite like it before. Uh, really should do some more research into it. Who knows? It could be something. I could be sitting on a gold mine here for all I know. As far as robotics goes, you know, size is only one of the many things that go into the equation on how value works on these things. I mean, just look at Isobot. I mean, he is one of the more sought after robots and he's smaller than, you know, two thirds of my robots at least. So moving on down. Actually, before we move down, I guess I should also point out uh, Magic Mike, not the dancer, the robot. I've got two of them. I have a silver that's in the box and this gold one right here. Pretty fun. I should really get them both out and make a video of them. Uh, their smoking feature is pretty funny. I think it's pretty cool. Kind of shows the difference in the time there, I guess, because I don't think there's any modern toys that uh, pro promote smoking. So just, just something a little neat that I should point out there. Now, moving down. This is the Zoomer shelf. Uh, I actually do have a lot of Zoomers, which I guess I've just kind of acquired them over time. I'm really glad I did, though. I honestly love the Zoomer family of robots. I'm going to pull up a chair real quick because I might be talking here for a while. 
I do love the Zoomer family of robots, especially the Zoomer Chimp. Uh, I would say that might actually be my favorite of the Zoomer robots. I also love Zoomer Kitty. Again, that's probably just bias. Um, but as far as my collection goes, I have a Zoomy, one of the mini Zoomers. Uh, I'm not sure the specific name of this one here. Uh, I've got Bentley. I've got Boomer. Or not Boomer. Uh, Onyx. And then I have the Indigenous from the uh, the new Jurassic World movie. I guess it's not so new anymore. It's been out for quite some time. But new compared to the original Jurassic Park movies. Uh, I actually forget the name of this one here specifically. Uh, but I do like the colored pattern on it. The green and blue looks really well. Goes really well together. Um, and then I have one of the Chompies. Behind that I have a uh, slightly damaged Zoomer. Uh, the, the leg is damaged and it's missing the ears. And I think the tail's missing as well. I got this one dirt cheap. I really wish that there was a way I could get them fixed up without how, obviously I don't want to invest too much money into it just because it is in such rough condition, but it does work. It does function. And I do if occasionally get it out and just play around with it, even though that doesn't necessarily work to a hundred percent. Uh, so back there, you can also see I have the uh, the show pony and Zoomer Chimp. One thing about Zoomer Chimp, I will say, is if you're getting into collecting Zoomer specifically, you need a Zoomer Chimp on your collection because Zoomer Chimp is probably the most complex or most. It's just one of the best Zoomers overall. It does a lot. It has a lot of features. It can stand up and sit down. Um, it's just an overall really cool robot. So definitely be sure to add that to your collection if you don't have one already. Also, I do have a really, really well-kept Zoomer in this box here, as well as a playful pup in that box there. Obviously, they're not perfectly on display because they are inside the boxes, but it keeps them in good shape. And, you know, I can get them out and use them if, if I so choose. Down here, this is where I keep some larger robots, stuff that don't get used all too often. Uh, this spike is actually, I can't say non-functional because I don't really know. I don't have a battery to test it, nor do I have a remote. Got it for a really good deal, though, so I grabbed it, especially with it being the red color. Uh, I'd like to get this one up and running because I've seen some videos of what Spike can do, and I think it would be a really cool one to bring out and uh, just let people play with. I also have this transforming robot here. I don't remember the specific name of the uh, company or the brand that they go under. Uh, but it is really cool. I had to go ahead and add it to collection. It was such a cheap buy. I mean, it's one of those things you just don't pass up on. Uh, same goes for that one back there and this guy right here. I'd also like to get some more information on this robot here specifically. I've never seen one before. It was pretty cheap. I just went ahead and grabbed it. Um, I honestly don't know if it's necessarily worth what I paid for it. But it's another robot added to the collection. And it definitely has a unique look to it. Down here, I have my Roomba. I need to get a new battery for this. I also need to find the charging uh, charging deck because I'm not sure where it is at the moment. But I'd like to get this set up so that I can have it running just in here just to keep things nice and tidy. So we're moving on to another shelf now. I guess we can start from the top and work our way down like we have been. So uh, I guess first and foremost, go ahead and knock this out. Here's my RC car collection. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this just because the majority of my viewers are robotic enthusiasts. But if it's something you guys would like to hear more about, let me know and I can go into more detail about that as well. Right here is where I keep my uh, more lifelike robotics. Uh, and I use that term loosely, obviously, because, you know, lifelike. Uh, we've got D-Rex, which his legs are broken. So that's a repair that needs to be done. Uh, I haven't really worked much with the, uh, the rubber skin Esque robots like him and Pleo are, and Pleo also has a damaged neck, I believe. I'm not sure. I haven't got to test it because I don't have a battery for it. Um, but that's something I'll have to look into in the future because I would like to get those two running, especially Pleo, because Pleo seems to be a really cool robot in my opinion, just from the videos I've seen. This is my Zuzu Pet collection. I actually used to have this one as a kid. This isn't the exact one I has had as a kid. But I used to have that one, and I found these for a very, very cheap price. I think I ended up actually buying all of them at once, if I remember correctly. And it was like 
maybe five dollars something like that you know if even that it was it was ridiculously low and i mean i, I get that they're not necessarily very sought after or anything of that sort but it's still nice to have them in the collection just because it does bring back some really fond memories over here this is my furby collection i do have quite a few furbies i will say out of all of them i think this one is my favorite just because i my favorite color is purple uh, this one is definitely the oldest in my collection right here. Um, not by actual age, but by how long I've owned it. Uh, it might also be overall the oldest one. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not very well versed as far as Furbies go. Uh, up here, I've got some for real friends. Uh, one's a panda and one's like a polar bear. They both work. They're pretty cool. I don't have any videos on them just because... I just don't think that there's very much uh, interest there. But if that's something you guys like to see, let me know. I've got this. This is actually pretty cool. This is a brand new in box Wowie Alive Lion. I've nicknamed this one Simba for obvious reasons. I uh, haven't got to try it out at all because it is brand new in the box. And I don't want to open it up if I don't have to. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be some kind of plastic film here to actually cover it. Um, it looks like there may have been at one point, but I can't, I can't tell for sure. I, I'll have to look into that some more and maybe get some more information on that. Uh, this is my, uh, iDog plush. This does actually work. This is a pretty cool little, just neat add on to the collection. I, I personally love iDogs and even though this one doesn't have any mechanical functions, it's still nice to have to the collection just because it is an iDog product, especially something as unique as this. I don't think there's very many out there anymore, specifically for the plush edition. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's more of an uneducated guess than anything. Uh, so this is my For Real Friends. I think it's a For Real Friends anyway, um, but it's an elephant and it doesn't have any super complex mechanical functions. Uh, in fact, I don't think that the legs move at all. I think it's just posable, but the trunk moves and the eyes move, the ears move, and it's overall a really cute robot. Um, I think I actually bought this new, um, and it was just, it was so cheap. It was on sale if I remember correctly. So even though it was more than I normally would pay for any kind of for real friends robot overall, I don't know. It's probably uh, just, just like with the Furby, I think it's the purple purple just always is something that I've, <laughs> if I see purple, I want to grab it. So moving on, this is my rad 2.0, another robot I have that doesn't have a battery or remote unfortunately definitely one of the cooler looking robots in my collection if not one of the coolest i think overall in my opinion these guys are the coolest but we'll come back to those uh so on the rest of the shelf we also have this walking talking toby robot uh untested uh if i remember correctly when i bought this guy i did try to actually power him on there's a lot of corrosion in his battery terminal unfortunately so that might be something that'll have to be worked on down the road. Uh, behind that, we've got just some uh, generic robots. These are brand new in the box. I got these as a Christmas present. I think these were sold at Family Dollar for a while. Let me get this one right here out of the way. I think that these were sold at Family Dollar for a little while. There's one blue and I think there's one black. In fact, they still have the Try Me batteries in them. If they, let's see if they still... Nope, they're, they're dead. They've been up here on the shelf for a while. In fact, I should probably take them out of the box and remove those batteries. Moving over, this is the new Bright Mech. I do actually have the remote to this. It came with the box, but the box was heavily beat up. It was unsalvageable, unfortunately. So I ended up just getting rid of the box. But it does completely work. It came with the bullets and everything. A really fun little robot. I like to play around with this every now and again. Um... I can't remember if it's rechargeable or not. It might be. I think it I think it is rechargeable. But beyond that, it does also have a built-in laser light where you can actually aim. And it's a, just a really fun robot overall. So moving on, this is my uh these are my I guess I should say these. These are my Commando Bot 3s. I have two of them. I'm actually currently in the process of looking for someone who would like to adopt one of them. Um, they are one of my favorite robots, so I hate to see it go, but I really need to make some more space. 
uh, getting rid of some duplicates. So I don't know if I will end up getting rid of one of these specifically, uh, but it is on the list of things that I am willing to rehome to a, another collector. Same goes for two of my three Robbies. Um, if there's anybody out there who's looking for those, let me know. Uh, they're really fun little robots. Obviously, you know, their whole gimmick is they eat the coin. They're just a piggy bank overall, but they are Radio Shack brand. Um, and just really fun little things to have. Um, I really should take one of these and set them up on my computer desk just as to use as an actual piggy bank rather than just having them on display. This shelf here is where I keep all of my uh, As Seen on TV robots. I've got the Forbidden Planet robot, brand new in the box, back in the very back. We've got Wally, -E, R2-D2, and Minion from BattleBots. Now, let's get on to, I guess you could say, the main event. And I gotta knock this out quick, so. Up here, this is sort of just a mixed-up collection of smaller miniatures, uh, wind-ups. I also have some RC BattleBots up here. As you can see, I've got Rotator here, Witch Doctor there, Duck... I need to get a few more of those added to my collection, actually. Um, in the very back, I have a couple other robots. This one, I actually won at an arcade. It is really cool. I'd like to make a video for you guys about that one specifically here soon. This one here is untested. Um, I need to get it down and actually try it out. I don't think I've actually had got around to actually trying and seeing if it does work. Um, so down here, this is my Robo Sapien V1 collection. There are a few more whites in the back, but I keep one white and my two special editions on display. Uh, again, just like with the uh, Commando Bot, I will be rehoming some of these. I will be keeping the special edition colors, but I have some local parties who are interested in potentially getting a couple of the V1s that are white that are in the, uh, the back of this little box. Over here, this is the majority of my Wowie collection. Obviously, I do have... We can go down here real quick. This is my Roboraptor and Roboreptile collection. I'll be getting rid of two of the white Roboraptors and two of the white reptiles. Eventually, maybe, if I can find a buyer or someone who'd be willing to trade. I also like to trade. I just really need to open up some space for some new stuff. So, going back to up here, this is my Femis Sapien. She does work. She is a bit yellowed on the backside, but overall, really solid robot. Really awesome that I still have this in my collection. I almost actually sold sold her not too long ago, but luckily that deal ended up just not going through. So I'm I'm and I'm glad because I feel like if I would have done that, I would have some serious uh, seller's remorse. Over here, we've got Rex the dog proudly on display. Definitely one of my favorite Wowie robots. It's such a unique design. I love the squeaky toy tail. I love the slot machine eyes. If you guys haven't seen videos of Rex the dog, please go check some out or let me know Let me know down in the comments and I can make some myself. Uh, behind there, we've got Robo Panda. I do not have any of the cards for it, so I cannot really make any good demo videos of it at the moment. Uh, if I ever find one down the road that has one of the demo cards in it, I'll be sure to grab it. Or if I could find one of the demo cards themselves somewhere. I don't think I'll actively uh, go out and try to find them uh, online or anything like that. But if I find one while I'm out thrifting, I'll be sure and grab it. Uh, right here, these are my RoboQuads. This one, actually interesting story, it started out as a Discovery RoboQuad, which is the green and gray. Uh, I got a red that I purchased, and unfortunately, it was just completely dead. So I ended up switching the shells over. Um, whether I should or shouldn't have done that, that's hard to say. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the green and gray shells anymore. Um, but it does also have a modified LEDs on the base, which are RGB. And I really should pull this apart and make sure that I did this the proper way, because I may have only used heat shrink. I don't know if I actually soldered the connections. Uh, this was one of my very first like repair slash mod kind of things that I ever did. Uh, so forgive me if that's the case. I might pull that apart and check that out at some point. Uh, this is my blue Robo Pet, probably one of the oldest in the collection as far as ownership for me goes. I know this was in one of my first like three or four YouTube videos. Um, I don't know if it still does the same little glitchy thing that it did back then. I haven't booted it up in quite some time. I really should get my... Uh, get some batteries and get a couple of these older robots out that just haven't got 
any kind of time in the spotlight in quite some time. Uh, up here, this is my uh, RoboSapien and RS Media collection. Um, as I mentioned before, there's an RS Media over here, which is going to be going out. This is not the same as the one that I've made videos on. And then there's the red, which is still being worked on. I'm waiting on connectors for that one. Um, but up here, I've got my silver RoboSapien RS Media. This one is actually a UK import, interestingly enough. That cost me a lot of money. Probably spent more on this robot specifically than I should have. But at the end of the day, it's nice to have one in my collection because they are getting really hard to find these days. I also have my red RoboSapien V2, the, uh, the one you guys have seen videos on. Um, once I get this one here rewired, I might actually pull this one apart and rewire it the proper way like I'm doing this one. This one was kind of uh, not necessarily done incorrectly, but definitely not done to my liking, so to speak. And if I do end up doing that, I will actually end up trading one of these for a different color, maybe a rewired blue. Um, if anybody would be interested in that, let me know down in the comments and we could try to work out a deal maybe coming in the future. Uh, my white, my oldest rewired V2, that was, um, I got this from a guy that I don't believe is active in the community anymore, but it was rewired by Zero 635 and it just ended up in my possession because he decided to, uh, sell it while it was still in Kevin's possession, if I remember correctly. I, I'm not sure the specifics has been so long. Um, but definitely still works, still awesome robot. Definitely, you know, really glad to have Robo Sapien V2s in my collection in general. That one though, I remember it. I have special memories with this one just from it being my first. Over here, we've got Tribot. I used to have two of these, but I sent one of them to a friend of mine. Um, the hands are missing, unfortunately. Uh, I might be able to 3D print some kind of replacement. Again, something that if you guys would like to see it, let me know. Uh, a lot of these robots have just smaller things that 3D printing could probably help with. Uh, over here, we've got MIP. I do have the black edition. I do not have the white edition. Uh, this I got brand new. I do not have the box anymore, unfortunately. I wish I would have saved that. Uh, it was one of the first robots that I ever got brand new. So that's a little interesting tidbit about that. Down here, we've got Mipasaur, which is proudly in display in his case. He has been taken out of the box and used. I have some videos on my YouTube channel of him. Uh, he's just in the box for now just because it looks nice. Um, I'm glad that I did save the box for this one. This one, I, I love Mipasaur. I will be honest. Of all of the modern uh, Wowie robots, Mip, Mipasaur, Chip, and then there's a couple others that are just didn't really take off so well. Um, Mipasaur is definitely one of the more fun ones. I really love the um, the leash mode where he'll follow you around. I really enjoy doing that. So again, one that I would definitely like to bring out if I was to ever do some kind of display. Over here, speaking of chip, here is my chip. I think he actually needs a new battery, unfortunately. It seems like his battery is not lasting as long as it used to. He still does boot up, but he tries to charge himself after maybe five, 10 minutes. Um, so that might be something I'll have to look into in the future. Maybe the, maybe there might be some aftermarkets available on like eBay. I just haven't looked into it. Chip, I will say, you know, as, as hard of a time as I give Wowie for some of the more modern robots that they come out with, I will say Chip has been a pretty solid robot overall. Um, they do have some mechanical issues as all robots do, unfortunately, but overall really fun, really interactive robot that I really enjoy getting out and playing with at times. Also, you can control Chip with a RoboSapien V2 remote. If you don't know that, and if you have both of these robots or a Chip and at least a V2 remote, go check that out. Go try it out if you don't believe me. I also have a video of it myself on my channel. Down here, I've got my new inbox RoboPet. It is a green edition. I won this in an auction. Actually only spent $10 on this thing. Now, obviously that's before shipping, but I just, I'm surprised that nobody else bid on it, especially with it being the Radio Shack exclusive model. I could, I'm surprised it didn't sell for way more. I just bid on it just as, you know, a joke more than anything. I was surprised when I won it. I'm really glad to have this in my collection, though. It's nice to have some of the older models in uh, new inbox. I'd like to get a couple more, but they're just, the prices for new inbox robots these days is really shot up. Over here, I've got my uh, Wowie Chimp, a live chimp. Um, it doesn't work with batteries. I'm not sure why, but it does work when connected to an outlet. I don't have a remote for it, 
And yes, it is as scary as it looks. It is pretty beat up. I got a good price on it though, so I can't complain too much, especially with it working. I don't know if there's anyone out there who has the right kind of skill set to fix or restore these specifically. Um, I'm not sure if there's some way to actually reskin it and make it look proper, make it look refurbished. Uh, it's pretty beat up back here, especially um, around the eye. You can see there's a hole here. But really fun, really, really neat little thing. I made a video about it pretty recently, so go check that out if you haven't. Back here, I've got some mini Robo Sapiens in case there's actually a Spider Sapien mini on the bottom. But the reason why I have the regular mini Robo Sapien on display is because this one I actually won in a claw machine. Um, and that just, it brings me good memories, so that's why I leave it out on display. Up here, this is my uh, Silver Lake Corner. Uh, it's mostly filled with Icebees with an Icebot right here in the front. Um, it, there's no particular reason why it's out on the front display more than any of the Icebees are. Um, it's just nice to have the the full family. I w I do wish that I could find some of the rarer color models. Uh, these all I have are the golds and the blues, and then this one right here is a custom from uh, Infari Marie. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. This was one of her very first custom paints, so please don't judge it too harshly. Her work is seriously amazing. If you want a custom painted robot, you guys should definitely give her a holler. Um, this one is painted after a uh, Umbreon, as you can tell. I'm a big Pokemon fan, and I love this so much. I might actually s maybe send her a couple in the future and try to get like a whole Evolution collection of Ice Ivies if somebody else doesn't beat me to it first. Over here, I've got just two more Icebees, and these are just new in the, new in the box Icebees. Not actually new in the box, but in the box for display, I should say. Sorry. Um, this one here is in the 01 box, and the box is a bit damaged. This one over here is in the 05 box, and it does actually have the walk-up charger in there with it. Um, I also have my Vex Robotics uh, Tournament Champion trophy up here, just because I didn't really have anywhere else to squeeze it in. Um, along with some of the harder to find accessories. So I've got the special charging station chip right here, which I really need to put that in one of the robots itself just to protect it. This is supposed to be a battery jump starter. And this is supposed to revive the uh, overvolted batteries. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. I do have the paperwork for it though. So that's pretty neat. I don't think I've ever seen one of these, like even really pictured anywhere. So I'd like to do a little more research about this. This right here is the later model smart charger for the 2005s. Um, I do need to get an outlet for it, especially for the walk-up charger itself. So hopefully I can find something along those lines here in the future. I also just need to get all of my Cybe batteries reselled in general or order some remake batteries because there are some sellers who uh, have those kind of batteries available. Um, but I do love my iCybees, and I will say out of all my robots, I think iCybee is my favorite overall. They are what started my YouTube channel after all. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if I missed anything, if you see anything else that you guys want covered, let me know. If I dragged this video out too long, let me know. If you guys would like to see any more videos like this where I go even more into detail about specific robots, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Um, beyond that, I hope you guys have a good day. Stick around because I will be trying to make some more robot videos down in the, down, coming down in the road. Uh, anyways, peace.